To paraphrase Chico Escuela, CSI has been very, very good to me <laughs> for a very long time. And there are countless people who, without them, I would not be here today. I've been out of school for several years when I took my first job as specifier. I, until that time, I didn't even know what CSI was. They certainly didn't mention it in school. <laughs> and uh, I think they might have mentioned word specifications maybe once in the professional practice class. Before taking that job, the closest I came to writing a specification was to copy one onto a drawing. And I'm sure I eventually would have learned about CSI, and I would like to tell you that I joined CSI because I saw great value in membership. The truth is, my boss told me I should join CSI. <laughs> So I did. Uh, he retired about a year later, and it was after that I found that he was a founding member of our chapter. And there he was, guiding me into CSI. And I remember my first chapter meeting. I didn't know anybody. I had wandered into this room, and I'm just looking around and not knowing what to do. And, uh, and then came the call to dinner. And uh, so I walk into the dining room, and I'm standing there with the Deer in the headlights look. I like what I have right And um, <laughs> I, I just, you know, I had a loss. And uh, fortunately, one member, uh, sensing my predicament, came over, took me by the arm, sat me down at the table, and introduced me to the other members there. And that member was Alana Griffith. I think some of you may know her. Uh, another in early influence was Doug Lingren. Um, you, probably two of you know him, but in the at the St. Paul chapter, he was known as the Dean of Specifiers. He still is known as the Dean of Specifiers. Well, Doug, along with Pete Norum, another chapter member, taught certifications, what, certification classes where we read the entire A201 out loud. <laughs> not, not in one sitting, but we did. I mean, we, we had to know this stuff. And, uh, and of course, I uh, passed my CCS exam, thanks to Doug. Um, uh, and he was one of those guys who was always ready to take a call, always willing to help, and I'm sure that many times when I called him, he thought, oh, here's another silly question from that, I was gonna say young specifier, but from that new specifier. Um, another chapter member was John C. Anderson, who I think was one of CSI's most forward-looking members. Um, he was a wealth of knowledge about everything CSI and construction, and another guy who was always willing to help. I remember, uh, well, John and I frequently uh, traveled to uh, technical meetings, technical committee meetings together, and so I had a lot of really good one on one time with this with this guy, and um, I still treasure those moments. John was a great guy. I remember coming home from the uh, San Diego convention in 1991, and I sat next to a guy on a plane. He talked pretty much nonstop for four hours. <laughs> now, that sounds really bad, but this guy was Dale Mall. And it was one of the most fascinating discussions that I ever had. Well, I can go to him. You know, many, member, many members of my chapter became my go to guys, and as I served in more positions, I met more and more dedicated, inspiring leaders from across the country who all helped one another when needed. Now, do you see a pattern here? The point is, CSI is more than an organization, it's people. And it's not just people, it's volunteers who do great things and help each other. They are the reason that many of us remain members. We have a standing joke in the North Central region. It involves my good friend John Griffith and me. And uh, for several years, uh, Griff and I have played musical chairs in CSI. Um, I followed him as chapter president. He followed me as institute director. I preceded him in fellowship. He preceded me as chancellor of the college fellows. So we overlapped a lot, and, and I think we were a pretty good team. Well, the joke is that if you wanted a quick answer, you would ask Griff. Um, <laughs> as a subcontractor, he's accustomed to making quick decisions on the fly, and he's good at it, and he's a successful businessman. And his typical answers consisted of a few words, maybe a sentence on a good day and sometimes a single word. Now, I, on the other hand, 
as anyone who has corresponded with me knows. Uh, I can't get out of the block without a fair couple of paragraphs anyway. Um, Twitter is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but although I'm not a man of few words, I have struggled to find the right ones to express my feelings about the Senor Honor. I believe most recipients have used the word humble or some form of in their acceptance comments. I always thought this was a reference simply to the magnitude of the honor, but I now understand the greater depth of that word. Since being notified of the board's decision, I've often thought about the many members who have served us so well and done so much more for us over the years. And as Dennis said, I'm sure there are others who are more deserving to be here tonight. Um, but it's when you consider all of those things, those other members and what they've done, that it does truly become humbling to be selected for this honor. As Dennis noted earlier, um, honors of this sort uh, are often the work, uh, result of work of many others that you build upon. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about those other members who made significant contributions, Dennis is with at the top of the list. I met him on the specification subcommittee back in the 90s, I think, and I've always admired his abilities in leadership. Now, when I got the call from Lane, the call, um, he didn't say anything about Dennis. And I was a little concerned with that. So when I saw the press release a couple of days later and I saw that Dennis also was going to be here today, I was really happy about that. Uh, we apparently make these presentations alphabetically, but I think that worked out well because I'm pleased that Dennis preceded me to, uh, in the distinguished membership. Congratulations. Almost done, off to the party. Um, it's been a privilege uh, and it's been fun serving CSI for the last 30 years. It's been that long now. And although this is CSI's highest honor, I do not see it as a pinnacle. And that's a place where there's no place to go but down. Now, there's a lot to be done yet, 